Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home this Predator generator. Uh, this one was listed for parts only and only cost 50 bucks. Uh, the engine's good, but it doesn't make power. And apparently it has never made power. You know, the person who sold this to me purchased this new, didn't use it until a couple years later. And when he did finally go to use it, discovered that it doesn't make any power whatsoever. So he did replace the AVR, still nothing. Uh, he measured the voltage out of the outlets and it wasn't zero, but it was 2.5 volts out of the 120. And that's basically residual magnetism. So the rotor is not powering up. You know, it could be a bad rotor, bad brushes, bad AVR, or a bad DPE winding. And he's already replaced the AVR. So most likely this is terminal, but you know, before tearing this thing down for parts, I'm just gonna take you through the process of determining kind of where the point of failure is. You know, that should help you if you're dealing with something similar. So I'm gonna check the health of the stator through the outlets. And this works on both brushed and brushless generators. Now, this is a 240 volt generator, which means it has two 120 coils. So they both have to be tested. It's pretty visual here as far as which coil is which, but if you're not sure, just check them all. And as far as the readings that you'll get on this, I know this Predator in particular should test at about one ohm. You know, most generators that are 5,000 watts or above test at like half an ohm. Uh, but this one and several other brands I've tested of this size come in closer to an ohm. Anyway, before doing the test, check the resistance of your meter and just note what that is. In my case, it's 0.1, so I can subtract that from any reading I get down here. And keep in mind too, this is a low voltage test. It may look good, but it doesn't guarantee it's good. But if it tests bad, then it's bad. So 0 0.9, 0 0.8, Subtract 0 0.1, we're close to 0 0.7. So that is a good reading. Check the other leg. We're about the same. So from the outside, the stator looks good. What I wanna do down here is test the resistance at the brushes. And this is kind of in the way, so I'm just gonna cut the zip tie to move the wires out of the way and then I'll show you better what I'm doing. So it is hard to see, but the brushes are in here and there's two wires going to it. The blue one in this case is the positive, which is marked here, and the yellow is the negative. If you do disconnect these, make sure you take note. Uh, this is DC going in, so it is polarity sensitive. Now I'm gonna check the resistance of the rotor. Generally, 70 ohms is the highest I see for a good rotor. And the lowest I've seen is about seven ohms. So if it's within that range, I'll be pretty happy. Otherwise, we might have a problem. Yeah, we get nothing at all. Either the brushes are bad or the rotor's bad. So when I get the brushes out, we'll try directly to the slip rings. Yeah, the brushes look okay. It could be a wire broken. You can test that same way with the ohms, but I'm gonna go right to the slip rings and see what we get. Yeah, still nothing. I would say we have a broken wire on the rotor. Generally rotors don't melt down, but they spin at 3600 RPM. And what happens is usually where the wire 
connects to the slip ring, there's a solder joint or a solder joint, depending upon where you're from, and that tends to break. There's not much more I can do without getting the stator off. So I'm going to get the fuel tank out of the way. That'll give me better access to down here. Most likely the muffler has to be removed. And then I can get these bolts out holding the stator in and pull it off. You know, with the bolts undone, I can lift the stator up and I'm gonna support the engine with a piece of wood because two of the mounts are on this side. And once the stator's removed, the engine's just gonna to wanna to flop over. Those boards will help keep the engine upright. I'm going to use a gear puller on the ball bearing. Sometimes they come out without a puller, but usually you need something. And don't crank down too hard. This is aluminum. It cracks very easily. Yeah, the end housing is coming off. Usually that's bolted to the stator and they come off as one piece. Since that's the case, I'm gonna to have to remove this wire block that has all the stator wires on it so that way the end housing can come off without tugging on those wires.
This is the wire running from the slip ring on the other side. Comes over here and it looks like it's just twisted together and it's all corroded. In fact, it seems like it's broken. Yeah, there we go. I don't know what the reading should be for this rotor, but 18 ohms seems reasonable. So the problem is right here. And unfortunately, there's really not enough good wire to work with. I mean, if there was you know, an extra inch or so, you could just run another wire over, reattach it, but that's not the case. It's broken right down here, right before it goes in here. And all these wires, they're basically glued together with an enamel or a varnish. And you can't just peel a wire out to get more slack. Yeah, unfortunately, I think this rotor is done. Although I can't save the rotor, we have a perfectly good engine. So I'm gonna separate the rotor from the engine uh, that way i can basically have it ready to go the next time i pick up a generator of this size that needs an engine so i'm going to fill the cylinder with rope just going to find the bottom of the stroke which is right there So the good news is there's threads on this. Should make it pretty easy to remove, but I've said that before. Anyway, I don't remember exactly the size of this bolt. I'll figure it out and just put it on the screen for you. But I think the bigger issue is that this bolt is pretty much the same size as the shaft here. and. If I just use a rod that's this size, I'm gonna push right into the threads on the crank and destroy them. So what I need to do here is actually get the engine off, stand it up, and use water to build up some hydraulic pressure and pop it off the tapered shaft. You want to wrap it at least seven or eight turns. Really, the more the better, as long as the bolt still fits. And make sure it's tight. All right, we'll try that. <laughs> and there we go. And not too bad for 50 bucks. You know, we got a good Predator engine, that control panel, a good stator. What's left of the frame 
and a fuel tank. Now, potentially this could be fixed if I could buy a new rotor. Generally, it's cost prohibitive. And in the case of Predator, I can't even find a parts diagram, never mind parts, for the generator. You know, the engine, there's plenty of aftermarket stuff, and it is just a Honda clone, so most likely Honda stuff would fit in that. But that's not the issue here. So I just wanted to turn the camera on real quick and show you kind of how to troubleshoot a no power situation. And in this case, it's terminal. So uh, now you know how to break down a Predator. Hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.